Driving a tractor, climbing a tree, you can find it all in Cotton Top 3. You better split them holes, man. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, right on through it. Son, we ain't in no dying dog. I know, right? So I got, I guess the last time this thing was on the video was, wow. man, it's been two years, it's over two years. So the people who don't know what we're in, this is, this is Chad's ride right here. This is the, uh, this is a, this is the crack wagon right here, man. I this is thick. No it's already a little too much, like a meth head. Yeah, meth, meth mobile. Yeah. We'll show y'all the front end of this thing. Was well, his mama blowed the motor up in this thing? This is a. Yeah. This don't look too bad up there. This is a uh, Nissan Xterra. Pathfinder. Xterra. Xterra, yeah, Xterra. They all look the same to me. Yeah. But his mama done blowed the motor up in this thing. He done got a new motor in this thing. <laughs> Let me show you the front end of it here, and y'all know why we call it the crack wagon for here in just a second. This ain't this ain't as bad as I thought it was. And Daddy sent that uh, video through yesterday. The ground is hard. So they're talking about, you see the forecast, they're talking about rain again, mm -hmm. Wednesday again. We need to pack up. Yeah, what we're gonna do is, is uh, we're gonna get out of here before this next rain mm -hmm. hits us here in this swamp. So we're gonna kind of get what we can get the next couple of days, and then we're gonna get these machines back across this creek. Yeah. And we're gonna homestead somewhere else. Hmm. Yeah. I think he, that boy bent the, uh, where it comes out of the firewall. The, the, the linkage. linkage. Yeah. That's why it's idled up a little bit. So this is why we call it the crack wagon. Yeah. The meth mobile. Gotta build me a cow catcher on the front of something, huh? Mm-hmm. We'll be all right. You can take it down there to your buddy uh, Rick. Rick down there and get him to build you a show figure, enough one. I figure I'll take it to Chabacoo shop. Put you about a 18,000 pound <laughs> winch in it, you know, because I mean, exactly you right. you really need an 18,000 pound winch on the... If it wasn't for the front end other than that, I mean, four wheel drive, mm -hmm. I got to put my basket back on the back so I can... Oh yeah, so you can bend it up some more. Yeah. Yeah. He did have a basket back here, and that's his, that was his that's where I his backup back camera. And yeah. when he heard that thing start crunching, he would stop. I knew I, knew I went further enough. You want to explain that sticker, Chad? It was on there when I got it. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he, had, he had another sticker back here. I think I blew it off. Yeah. Little crack wagon. That's right. Been a lot of dead whitetails all out with that thing, ain't it? Up where you end up. It's gonna be more. show you all that because I couldn't hold the camera and uh, do that at the same time so I got it all for him right there <laughs> yeah I got it all
machine right there man that thing will get with the program what you talking about I mean look at it <laughs> I think he's got about 180 hours on it or so now something like that just under 200 tree no matter what you're doing you can lay that tree at any angle all the way around you that you need to lay it it does not it, it doesn't matter Got it. I didn't think he was going to get that one. He didn't went too low on it, but he still pushed on through it. Can y'all imagine the forces that that machine is putting out? Think about the centrifugal force on that on just a saw disc. Look at them chips fly way over there to the right over there. The centrifugal force that that saw disc has on it spinning. It's 
spins at about 1200 RPMs is what that disc spins at. It weighs about 1400 pounds. see how the bearings hold up in that thing but I mean they do I mean they're giant they're just big uh, thrust type bearings kind of the same bearings that go in like a like a uh, trailer axle or anything like that same type bearing they're just humongous the spindle that that disc rides on oh my goodness that thing is a monster So what we're trying to do is Derek's just cutting out through here and Dad and Kevin are working on the road. Dad's on the rotor, on the motor grader and uh, Kevin's on the bulldozer and they're just trying to get things situated to where we can maybe get a truck in and out of here in a little bit maybe. one time a 445 uh, for about a week I guess and it just had a straight head on it it didn't have a 120 degree tilt it didn't tilt nothing or anything a matter of fact I don't even think that you could turn the the body of the machine that was it was in year 2000 the body of the machine you couldn't spin it all the way around either it just went so far one way and then you had to turn around and come back the other way and uh, with that straight head on it you could just cut and turn and drop the tree you know you couldn't you couldn't rotate that tree around like you can with with one of those type heads right there I mean the machine would the machine was okay uh, it wasn't those early machines wasn't nothing nowhere near like what that is right there now. The video for today, which is uh, Monday, that I filmed while we were watching Derek cut, I was sitting right here, about where I am right now. That's where Derek was cutting. So you can see what it looks like now. This is going back toward the bridge. We're going to walk down here. If you go back to the bridge video, where we installed the bridge, or they installed it, this is the other side of the creek from where everything was videoed and uh, it was just it was just woods and all this was built right here this road everything was just uh, built in here so we're about to eat lunch right now that's what we're doing I got to go get my pickup truck it's uh way down here where I got in Chad's uh, crack wagon this morning 
ride him him because I wasn't finna go through all that deep mud in my truck. He probably wouldn't have made it no how. But I hate getting that mud in my rims. Oh my gosh. You hear that fan? That's the fan. See, it's done cycle down now. The emission stuff on those engines have uh, quieted them down a lot. So you can't even hear the engine running on it right now. That son of a gun right there don't play. We're coming up on the bridge. You can see my truck sitting over there. We are gonna move off of this job. We got, they're talking about a couple of inches of rain coming in Wednesday. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up what we got. We're just gonna make today and tomorrow. And then we're gonna get our machines back across this creek right here. Just like the video, getting them over here on this side. We're gonna cross it same spot same way the water's actually uh, up from what it was when the video of us starting this job we've had a good bit of rain because if you'll go back and you'll look you see that concrete foot down there it's completely underwater right now now the way this works is, I had a lot of people ask me questions about this right here. The way this works is, once the job is done here, which will be next year, because once we come out, we'll have to wait till this next summer to come back in here and log this. All of this stuff will come out of this. The bridge will stay here, but what's in the water down there, the concrete footing and the legs, they will come out. It's what they will do. And then, because nothing heavy is going to go across it till it's logged again one day, other than just a tractor and a four-wheeler and a pickup truck, and that bridge right there will hold a uh, pickup truck up fine. Dad has been on the grader all day today, so far. Great, and this is the worst spot in the road right here. This is where the video started, where Chad and I were in the crack wagon coming through here uh, this morning. This right here is giving us fits. Dad's had to work it pretty much every time a truck goes out across it. So he's been dressing it up for us so that we could get the trucks out. And uh, I'm not sure where we're gonna move to. I don't really know. I hadn't got that far along yet. I have no idea right now at this point. But we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. This is a place that floods real easy. They say two inches. We may get a quarter of an inch and we may get six or eight inches. You never know about the weather around here. We were actually in the same situation in uh, 1997 
October the 27th to be exact it was on a Saturday we got five inches of rain in a place like this right here and we were crossing a creek just like this one the water got up it took us a week for the water to go down low enough we couldn't ford the creek every time we tried to put something in the creek it took off down the creek so we took the bank off the creek on both sides and we hooked we hooked everything together and we came across that creek at one time I sure wish I would have been filming back in the day then because the current was so strong in that creek I was on the dozer on our 850 and we didn't have the dozer that we've got now we had a regular 850 like 850B it was open when I hit that water in that creek, the current was so strong in there that it actually pushed that bulldozer down a little bit before I could get across it. We thought, we didn't know what we were going to do. We thought we were going to have to get our, our local crane service as monster cranes to come in there and grab our machines on the other side and pick them up and set them to this side. So. If you've never been in that situation with, uh, say, the people on the coast is with the hurricanes and logging equipment and stuff like that, if you've never been in that situation, you do not know what that's like. So since then, we've had several times when we've been in places like this right here and they call in for rain, we'll go ahead and just move everything out right quick to the, to the road or something to higher ground rather than leave it here and let the water potentially get underwater. Because, man, if, you, if you've had this stuff get underwater, oh, my gosh. I mean, you, you're talking about a, a nightmare to, to deal with. Uh, that, would be, that would be bad right there. That would be bad. So I'm going to go in here and fuel up right quick. We'll wrap the end of this video up right quick. I got uh, something that I want to show you all. This is my newest Olight. I got the newest baton. Olight uh, Baton SR. The S1R Baton 2 released uh, a few weeks ago, and I got one of them, which I've had three of these. And then last Monday, Olight released uh, this one right here, which this light is uh, solid copper. I'm not a fan of a rear tail cap switch for everyday carry light, but that's the way this one is. I mainly wanted this light because it's solid copper. The uh, and it's a no frills kind of light too. The, these lights here take the CR123A batteries, and of course they're rechargeable and all that stuff. That I prefer either the CR123As or the 18650 batteries is what I really like. This one right here takes a AAA battery, which I'm not a fan of. Again, I just wanted the light, but uh, this uh this is it right here. That's what it is. That uh, I3T EOS CU for raw copper. So I want this one to uh, tarnish out, to patina out for me. That's what I want it to do, and then I'm gonna quit carrying it. Uh, I just want I want it to turn green and all that good stuff. But it's got a good weight to it. It's just got uh, two levels on it's all it's got. So it's got a it's got a low. And then it's got a high. It'll only run like uh, 21 minutes, I think, on high. It'll run about 16 hours right there on that one right there. So if you want this light, I bought it. They didn't send it to me or anything like that. No, I bought it. You can get it. Uh, they got it on Amazon right now. It's kind of limited uh, with the amount that they were going to make out of it. But last Monday, they offered it for like two or three hours. You could buy this light for $22 right here. Uh, now I think it's $29. I got mine. Mine came in Saturday is when I got mine. But uh, but so far, I like it. I carried it all day today. And, uh, well, I carried both lights. I had this one and this one here. I'm a, I am a flashlight nut, man. I've got a ton of them. So just thought I'd share that with you. If you want one of these lights like this, go down to my Amazon link right down below in the description box. 
and it should be at the very tip top. When you open that page, it should be at the very tip top. Tip top. I think, like I said, I think they're twenty nine dollars right now. That's what they are. So, hope y'all enjoyed this video right here. A little story time there at the end, and um, hope your week's going well. Uh, y'all be watching this on Tuesday. This whole video was filmed on Monday. October the 29th is when this video was filmed. So it takes a lot to run a logging operation. A lot of stuff goes on during the day. I could film from the time I get up to the time I go to bed every day and just have tons of videos and all that. So I'm going to let y'all go for now. We'll catch y'all later. Later, Titus.